Hello. In this introduction, I'm going to show you a little bit of how CurePod works. This is a superficial look, so I will take you through the different uh, things you can do in CurePod, and we'll do a deep dive into the learning modalities we have. Um, in the following videos, we're going to go deeper into the AI, but this is a great overview of where to start. So allow me to share my screen with you all. So here I am inside the CurePod lesson generator. So first of all, CurePod is an interactive presentation tool. With presentation tool, I mean that you present something like you would do in PowerPoint or Google Slides. And with interactive, I mean that the students can interact with it, like they would in Nearpod or PeerDeck. Um, to start it off, we see here that we have the generators. These are the AI generators, AI templates. This is how you use AI to create stuff really fast. I will show this in another video in this section. Here you have your lessons library. This is where you can search for lessons created by other teachers. Then you have your elements or your uh, modalities, learning modalities. These are the different activity types we have inside Turbo. So I'm going to go into these a bit later on. Next on, we have the media side. This is where we now on a, go here. If we want to upload some images, some GIFs, we can do it here. The background side, uh, you could change the background on everything here. And upload slides. Here you can upload your presentation if you want to integrate. And here's the translation page. This is really nice to know about because you can translate any slide in CurePod to any language in the world. So what I want to show you in this uh, video is the different learning modalities or elements in CurePod. So we have polls. This is a place where you ask a question. Um, do you like ice cream? Or do you like cake? Or anything you want. And you can add some alternative. Yes, no. Then we have a word cloud. I will show you how this will work with students afterwards. So um, what is your food? You can set the duration of the activity here and how many words each participant can add there. Then we have the drawing activity. Draw your food. Again, you can set uh, the duration here and you can also choose whether or not the participants will be allowed to vote. I will go into the voting in another section. Uh, we have the open question. What is your favorite food? I'm using the same example here. And last, we have the first nice feedback. Um, explain how you make your favorite food. And with the answer expectation, you could, uh, you, with the personalized feedback, you can add some answer expectations. I'm going to tell you a little bit about those later. But now we've created a slide deck with five different activity types. And this is not usually how my lessons would look, so this is just to show you all. And uh, when you want to use this, you go present. You have your students join in with a pin code. What I want to do now to show you how it works is to go instead of present, I'll go preview. So in the preview section, you can see how it works both for uh, teacher screen. This would be the teacher screen, and this would be the student screen. So I'll have my students join in. And I'm ready to start the first activity. Do you like cake? That's the poll. Yes, I like cake. And the word cloud. What is your favorite food? Word cloud is a bit boring with only one participant, but let's do it either way. It's uh, taco. And fish, 
we know which like fish. And here you get the word cloud. Then we have the drawing activity. Draw your favorite food. And then the students, as you see, get a drawing canvas and they can draw. And not accomplish drawer, but let's draw this right here. Submit it. And since I activated voting, when this is done, we actually get to vote for all the one drawing. So I can do this one. And then we get results. Then we can uh, move on to the next activity, which was an open-ended answer. So instead of the word cloud here, you can answer with full sentences. My food is pizza. Now submit it. And again, we can do voting, or in this type, we might skip voting, go straight to just showing the answers. And then the last part, it was uh, um, personalized feedback. So that means that we can get some feedback on it as well. So to make pizza, you start by making the dough. Use flour, cheese, and uh, water. I'll submit this one. And then the teacher can look through the feedback and then press give feedback. And the AI creates some feedback on it. So this is an overview of the different elements or learning modalities in CurePod. Uh, in the next video I'm making, I'm going to show you how to use AI to create your lesson so you don't have to do it manually like I just did. See you later.